Now that we have our intake manifold, our original one out of the car, let's talk a little bit further about this M014 package one and what makes it special. You'll see three different iterations of the M272 manifold in front of me. One very used, genuine Mercedes one. Another one you can get from us. This is a Pierberg OE replacement. They're the original manufacturer for Mercedes. This right here, as you can tell by the black plastic, is the M014 manifold. And you'll also notice a whole lot less going on up front. And that is because there are no vacuum actuated flaps or anything of the sort. This is a single length manifold. So while we're losing some of that mid-range torque and punchiness that these uh, stock replacements are going to provide you and that around town drivability, what this maximizes is airflow all the time. So at the very top of the rev range, that's where you're going to notice this one the most. It's going to get all of the air in there possible and it's going to give you a little bit stronger of a top end. Great for like an autocross, back road or track car. Additionally, these being a factory piece of equipment on that M014 Sport Package SLK, this inlet right here for the throttle body is actually larger than it ever was on any other M272. So this right here is a standard uh, M272 throttle body. It's the very same as the one on the M112 or the M113. It's 74 millimeters. Uh, that will bolt directly onto this guy. However, it will not bolt onto this because this is upsized. This that I have right here is an 82 millimeter off of an M273 V8. So Mercedes with their OEM plus upgrade kind of just went into their own parts bin. They robbed this off the V8, it's much larger, and this will bolt directly onto the M014 manifold. So bigger throttle body, bigger intake manifold with zero uh, deterrence from air moving through it. That is why I do the M014 package manifold. All of the airflow, all of the top end. You will be sacrificing a little bit of that around town drivability, but it makes the car a little bit more fun to drive in my opinion. Here's our old intake manifold. Here's the M014 one that we're going to be swapping in. If you are not doing the M014 and you're just doing a standard replacement, that is okay. All of this is going to carry over for you as well. First things first, we are going to take the fuel rail off, swap it over. Uh, we do have injector seals that come in the kit in case you do damage one of these lower ones. If you really want to separate the injector from the rail, you can just pull these metal clips out, but there's no real reason to do that. So all we need to do again to our trusty E10, there are four bolts on top of the rail that are going to hold the rail onto the manifold. They will be a little bit tight, so I'm just gonna crack them loose and then we will zip them off. And then we can just pick the rail up and transfer it over. If we need the new seals, we do have them in the kit. I'm probably going to go with them just for the sake of, these are probably 180,000 miles old, so I'll replace them and then just lube them up with a little bit of engine oil if you don't have anything silicone at home. I'm going to transfer it directly over. The easiest way to do this to make sure you don't accidentally do it backwards, uh, pretty hard to do if you have a standard manifold, not that hard with this one since there's no bladders. Just line up the throttle bodies and then we're going to gently coax it directly up. It may fight you a little bit depending how long it's been here. All right, and if it is fighting you at all, you can take a flathead, stick it underneath these bolt holes where the rail bolted to the intake manifold and just kind of pop it upwards gently. Once you have it kind of out of that uh, place where it sits, you can then pull it up by hand. So I'm gonna do that. We are all the way out. So as you can see, these are our injectors. Uh, an additional note, if you are aiming to replace all of the injectors while you're in there, if you have a C230 or something sporting the 2.5 liter variant of the M272, in the United States, a lot of those cars were sold with factory flex fuel, which means these injectors are going to be different for you. We do have that on the website as well. Just make sure uh, you're not putting in the wrong injectors if you are doing that. All right, we have swapped on our new injector seals from the intake manifold kit that you're going to be able to find through us. We have the injector seals on and lubricated, so we are now going to slot this onto our M014 manifold, and then you can kind of just gently get these seated and then push them in. You'll hear them kind of clunk down. So we have our fuel rail seated in our new manifold, or if you're not doing the M014, you'll have it dropped into your stock replacement manifold. Uh, we're going to take the four bolts that we uh, unbolted from the original manifold to bolt the rail back down. You will actually notice when you look down at really all of these uh, little inserts on top of the intake manifold that none of them are threaded. That is not an accident, that is intentional. The bolts on these actually tap as they go, or if you'd prefer it, you can actually manually tap yourself. Then we are just going to torque the four bolts for the fuel rail, or however many on your 273 engine, uh, down to nine Newton meters. Fuel rail is torqued back down. 
Next, we're going to continue with swapping over everything from our old manifold that we are reusing. So for me, you may recall I said you could disconnect the map sensor or you could just pull the vacuum line off. Uh, I chose to disconnect the map sensor, so I am now going to pull this vacuum line off of its port on the old manifold, swap it over to the appropriate uh, relief that is cut on this M014 manifold. It just slides on. Uh, if you have a stock manifold, it's going to be very much the same uh, procedure. It might be a little trickier to tell because you have these big air bladders in front, but it's going to be the same game. So just take your time, make sure you're swapping the right one over. One will go to the map sensor, the other will be from the secondary air pump that we pulled off before we pulled this intake manifold out. Uh, additionally, if you do manage to get this plastic part off of the old manifold without snapping it, uh, for the M014, because it doesn't have a relief cut for this, you're actually going to want to pull the plastic nipple off entirely so you're left with just vacuum line, and then you're going to just plug that directly onto the nipple here. Whereas on your new manifold, I believe you'll already have uh, this plastic part attached, so you'll have to do the same thing, but if you don't, if you're using an uh, aftermarket manifold or something like that, you can just pop this guy directly into the hole. So, map sensor into this guy, and that will be directly up top of the uh, wiring loom. It'll plug back into its bracket. I uh, am going to go extract the little piece of plastic that you may recall broke off of the secondary air pump vacuum line, so that can just pop directly into place. Now it is time to do the throttle body. Again, we're going to be cutting our own threads on the inserts here. I am going to bolt this guy down, and when you torque these, these are also going to be nine Newton meters. We have our M01 manifold put together. We have the throttle body bolted on, torqued to nine Newton meters. This is ready to go back into the car. So if your vacuum lines are a little bit more brittle, particularly around the secondary air pump, you may remember that the plastic nipple broke off in ours. And when I was trying to remove that, it turned out that the actual vacuum hose that goes up into the manifold from the secondary air pump check valve over here, uh, that hose was just dry rotted and nasty. So what we actually did, and what I like to do with these, is cut a slit down the remaining portion of the rubber hose and took it off of this last little bit of nylon uh, tubing. So then what we can do is just take some vacuum line and just slide it directly onto the end of that nylon hose and connect it to our new intake manifold. All right, so we have our rags pulled out. Everything is ready to go. We are ready to put our manifold back in. So this is going to look slightly different if you have a stock manifold replacement. Of course, you're going to want to make sure your gaskets are staying aligned as you put this down what those dowel pins are for. They're going to help you with that drastically. M014 manifold, of course, we have the integrated uh, rubber seals. So these are going to be a little bit less of a concern. I will also note, I chose to bolt the throttle body to the manifold before dropping it back in the car. If you chose to leave it kind of dangling in the engine bay, of course, you'll be doing that in the car. I personally like doing it on the manifold outside of the car as it is a little bit easier to get the torque spec and to get everything back together. But now, just going to tuck everything nicely and gently, slowly dropping this down so we get it properly seated on top of the engine. Take your time with this, especially if you are working with a stock manifold, because you want to make sure those gaskets are aligned properly. Most of the way down here, get our bolt holes lined up, and that is a manifold loosely in the car. All right, so we now have all of our bolt holes lined up for the manifold. I am going to do this in a cross pattern just to make sure we're getting even pressure distribution as we go. Torque spec is going to be nine Newton meters, and I'm going to be going across and then uh, with ways, and then I'll torque it all down. Uh, I am using a dab of Loctite here, just a very small amount. Uh, that's because on this manifold, I know it's never coming out again, considering there are no runner flaps to go bad. So I will be doing that. I'm also going to trim this rubber hose to length so that it can fit on this nipple in the front. This is the one that we just added on, but let's get those bolts in there. I'm going to start off just threading them by hand just to make sure we have everything lined up properly. And then again, the torque spec on these is going to be nine Newton meters. You're going to want to be careful with these because they are very easy to snap. And additionally, now that we're going to the composite manifold, uh, if you're torquing this down on the magnesium manifold, of course, that is metal, so it's a little bit more resilient, but we don't want to crack our plastic manifold either. 
So with our intake manifold torqued to spec, we can now start plugging everything back in. I'm going to start at the rear of the engine with the throttle body. So a reminder, this is our squeeze type connector. We're just going to tuck that underneath. And you will hear this one click in and you'll kind of feel it too as you're coaxing it onto the connector. All right. So if we have that on. You will notice that the cable is kind of looped underneath. That is fine. It's not going to intrude on our uh, intake boot as we go to put that on in a bit. Additionally, while we're back here, we do of course have that one other sensor at the back of the driver's side cylinder head. So I'll just plug that back in. It's going to be the reverse of installation, which will be pushed down until you feel it gain appropriate depth and then click down on the gray tab. That's going to be kind of the theme of a lot of this, plugging it back in, you'll push it down and then you will seat the gray tab, which will give you a nice little satisfying click. Uh, friendly reminder, if you did loosen the metal uh, connector that holds the loom onto the dipstick tube bracket, you're gonna to wanna to seat that again. So you just push it down and it'll clip on. So that is done. Now, as you can see, I kind of have the wiring harness, at least on the passenger side here, loosely mocked up with where everything's supposed to be. Uh, if you are doing the M014 manifold swap, you will have a loose sensor at the rear of the engine. That is because we have deleted the uh, intake flaps. So we are omitting that rear flap sensor. That was the one that was formerly transverse mounted at the back of the manifold. So you will have a loose connector. Otherwise though, uh, you're going to have the standard number of fuel injectors, everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead, start plugging in our fuel injectors. Starting at the front is usually the best idea. So it's going to be the same thing we were talking about earlier. Make sure you push it down so it clicks and then press on the gray tab so you hear an additional click and that'll ensure that it is locked into place. If it hasn't locked into place or if it's not fully seated, you will get some very funky drive dynamics as one of the injectors is either intermittently firing if it's a partial connection or if it's not firing at all. For example, we have uh, one of the injectors here, just going to press down and then gray tab. So you heard a nice little click there. So I have one more to do on the passenger bank and then three more on the driver's side, of course. And then from there, we get to move on with some additional steps. Okay, so with our injectors all plumbed up, we have the two sensors at the rear of this that'll be flopping loose. That is a direct result of us doing the M014 swap. You'll also have this guy, normally would have plugged in right here on a standard manifold. That would all obviously go into your normal manifold. Uh, you'll have a connector for that. I am now going to do our uh, low load PCV hose. So this is the one on the driver's side. This kind of just tucks underneath the loom. Actually, better way to do this is to go underneath this bracket because the bracket itself actually clips onto this hose. So tuck it underneath and then you can kind of see this is going to be very brittle so I urge you to be gentle with it but it's going to just go right over here and lock into place and then of course this bracket is going to bolt right here. That's for our ECU to sit upon. But for the PCV breather hose, that's going to pop directly into the top of the throttle body and then just push down. It's not gonna lock into place or anything, but you'll get it seated level with the throttle body and flush. And then while we're in here, uh, we can start throwing some of our other plugs back onto the fuel rail bracket. And then we also have our other breather hose that plums in here. We can clip that in to the PCV. Okay. This guy, you can just press fit on. You'll hear it click and that'll lock it into place. Also, if you do have a standard manifold that you're putting on for the MT-73 or 273, this will be your flap sensor. The easiest way to tell this apart from the injector plugs, if you are confused, the injector plugs are generally going to be yellow on the inside. So this is going to just plug straight down and directly into sensors that would normally be there for you. For the M014, of course, we won't have that. So these will be left flopping. I may actually unbolt them from the old manifold and just stick them on so they are flopping loose in here. Generally, you'd want to tune the ECU to code those out as well as accommodate for a changed fueling table as, of course, we're getting a lot more air in the engine all of the time now. For these ignition coils, it's going to be the same as any of these other gray tab connectors where you push them 
hear that first click, and then you're going to push on the gray tab to lock them in place. Don't need to push very hard. If you have to push very hard, you may be doing something incorrectly. This one is quite oily. So first click, can't hear that one on the amount of oil, but and then there's the tab clicking in. So those are these coils set. Uh, we do have a ground, do not forget these. I'm gonna grab a bolt for those in a minute, but first we're going to get all the connectors situated. So I'm also going to move forward to the very front of the engine. Uh, you may recall we actually slid the metal tab at the alternator off, so I'm just going to tuck that on again. All right, there it goes. Then we can come up top. This guy will go to right here. The smaller clip is going to go to our secondary air injection uh, check valve. Just clips right in. This guy is going to go straight back to our pigtail. Before I do those, I'm going to do the second cam adjuster magnet plug, which is down here. Just push that one in and click it in. Then the cam position sensors at the front, same deal. These do not have locking tabs on them. So you're just gonna push them down until you hear it click. So same thing on the driver's side. Uh, we're going to be just plugging these back in. Again, they're going to fall relatively naturally with where you'd want them to be. We will have the map sensor. Just tuck it back into its bracket. All right. So we already did the ignition coils on that side. I'm going to do that on this side as well. And then we will start uh, plugging in by the fuel rail. So now that we have a lot of our uh, connectors plugged in and we kind of have everything oriented where it's going to be, we can reattach our fuel line. This is going to be 22 Newton meters. I'm going to just give it a nice little snug up and that should be more than enough. So we have that set. Uh, I'm going to reinstall the engine pulling brackets. All right, first up, we'll do our driver's side one. Reminder, these are the longer E10s. All right, and these are going to be torqued to 20 Newton meters. All right, so that is the driver's side set. We are going to do the same on the passenger side. All right, now is a great time before we forget to reconnect our grounds. So these are going to go uh, back to the E10s. All right, going to do also the same thing on the other side at the rear coil. Now that we have that ground set, we can do one, two, three, and four. Those are going to be holding on the plastic bracket for the wiring loom. All right, with those set, we're going to take our air deflector boot, and this is going to mate up to the throttle body and direct it to our mass airflow sensor. If you are doing the M014 swap, you will need to upgrade to an M273 unit. We have that on our site. So you'll hear this clip on top and bottom, which will alert you that it is seated properly. And it has a bracket on top of the throttle body that it's going to clip onto. So that is going to be fully flush and seated. You can give it a little tug if you want to make sure. Uh, if you do have used seals on this, this of course is a new air deflector boot, so it's a little bit tighter of a fit. If you do have used ones, it's going to look a lot easier than I just had it. But then we're just going to make sure we tuck this onto our oil drip tray, which is a portion of our high load PCB system. This will also be a bit tighter of a fit because we do have a new hose on here. We're going to push it so it sits level with that little rectangle on the plastic uh, nipple coming off of the drip tray. All right, so now that we have our air deflector on at the rear of the engine, we can put our mass airflow sensor back into place. There is going to be a relief cut in the back of it that will slide onto the metal clip of the air deflector boot. That may help you orient things. Worst case, you can use a pick to kind of move it out of place, but you should be able to just kind of wiggle it in. And you will want to mount uh, these tabs onto the relief at the back of the manifold. There are positions you may recall to clip this in. All right, so it's always a good idea at this point to take your flashlight and look down. Make sure your air deflector boot is still flush mounted on your throttle body because of course any leaks around that seal or the seal not uh, actually locking onto the throttle body are going to cause some really bad running conditions and additionally some gunk into the intake manifold and into the throttle body. You can also take your plug for the mass airflow sensor, pop that in, click and then lock it down with the gray tab. So we have our last E10 bolt. It's going to be nine Newton meters up here. All right, so I'm back to my T30s. 
We have a few of these that are going to be at the top, but I'm also going to lock the harness onto the engine mount bracket with these. And then we have a series of T30s. These are going to be holding on your engine computer brackets. So we're going to go ahead and get those snugged up. Those are nine Newton meters as well. As, and that includes the two at the rear. All right, so we have everything torqued down up top. Last step here, plugging the ECU back into its bracket. These just kind of press fit in. Before I do that though, and actually seat them, we do have the connectors at the fuel rail down here and at the bracket itself. So I will do fuel rail first, clip that into place. We also disconnected this metal bracket that's right over the, uh, where the line connects to the rail itself. That just slides on top with a little bit of force. You may need to pry the tabs out a little bit. So that clips into place. We have this connector. All right, and that's going to clip as well. Move our large connector just out of the way. Drop the ECU on top. I like to take a hand and just press it in. Then this guy looks intimidating, not so much. You just press it kind of into place. And then as you push this tab in, as you can see, it's sucking the plug inwards. We are now fully sealed up after our M014 swap. We're going to start the car up in a moment here. Check for leaks once again for fuel at the injectors underneath the manifold. Then after that, we can button up the engine cover and everything. We are bone dry as we should be. And put our hand on the engine. There's no weird misfires that would signify maybe an injector not firing. Things are getting settled down now. All right, this is all looking pretty good. I'm gonna shut the car off, put the engine cover back on. We'll go for our first test drive to make sure everything's working as intended, but should be good to go. So. That is going to conclude our M272 and M273 intake manifold swap, as well as the M014 intake manifold retrofit on your M272 V6. Normally, I'm going to always urge you to get an ECU tune if you do that M014 swap. You're playing with the way the airflow is delivered into the engine, you're maximizing it, you're also changing the entire power delivery of the vehicle. So an ECU tune is going to be the way to not only maximize the potential of the swap, but it's also going to be the most reliable way to ensure that everything is in check, all the programming is kosher, and we're all squared away. So uh, you can actually check back in the comments section a few weeks after this is released because I personally will be driving this vehicle without an ECU tune, and I'll report back to you to see if I have any reliability concerns or drivability concerns for you. But ultimately, I really am going to urge you to get a tune. It's the right way to do it. So uh, you can stay tuned for that in the comments section. Additionally, if you're doing this swap on your vehicle or even just a standard manifold replacement, let us know how it goes below in the comments. Like, subscribe for more Mercedes content coming your way from me. And additionally, we'll have a whole bunch of other Eurocentric content coming your way very soon.